Well, today I'm out here in my barn again, as usual. And I'm working on straightening up some in the barn, going through some of my many things that I don't need and throwing them into the scrap pile. Those things that can be scrapped anyway. But I'm here to talk about truth as defined by scripture. And that truth is that we're washed clean through Messiah, but obedience is still compulsory. You know, it's it's not optional. If you're saved, you obey. If you don't obey, you're not saved. It's pretty cut and dry. It's also very easy to understand. I don't obey to be saved. I obey because I'm saved. So, earlier today, I've been in discussions with a couple of different people, and one of them keeps jumping back to Hebrews as though the book of Hebrews can trump what Yeshua said, you know, like Paul could override Jesus. And that's never what Paul tried to do. Paul was simply explaining to a certain group of people whom he understood how they thought, you know, what their thought processes were, and also what their beliefs were. And he also knew and understood the thought processes and beliefs of the ones who were coming in trying to corrupt salvation through Yeshua and obedience in Torah. You know, there was a certain group and they were trying to do away with salvation through Yeshua and their goal was salvation through obedience to Torah. And we know that's not possible because I don't remember Old Testament or New, the scripture that says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So sin cannot stand in the presence of, of God, right? Well, if sin cannot stand in the Creator's presence, then somehow the sin that we have committed that stains us has to be removed. Can that sin be removed through obedience? Absolutely not, because that sin is in the past. Obedience is now. We can't go back and not do the sin that we've done. You know, we can't undo it and, you know, even though you may be punished for it or, you know, say you've stolen something and you carry it back to the person and you make recompense according to Torah, you're still guilty of stealing even though you've gone to the person and made it right, we'll say. Although we haven't made it right, we've only repented and recompensed. You know, we're regretful of it, but we still haven't changed it because we can. Okay? So, there has to be some sort of provision made to wash those past sins away that we can't correct ourselves. So, how does... Yeshua accomplished that. Well, Yeshua is eternally righteous. And while Scripture says one man can't be punished for the sins of another, it doesn't say that a man can't 
die in the place of another. In fact, Scripture specifically says that uh, greater love hath no man that, than that he lay down his life for his brother. Okay? Yeshua, who is eternally righteous and committed no sin, died to pay the penalty for us temporary beings. We still die at the end of this lifetime, however long it is. If it's if it's six months from birth, if, if you know you're stillborn, or someone who is stillborn, I have a daughter that was stillborn, you know, and or if they live to be 969 years old, such as Methuselah. Methuselah still died, you know, and the stillborn babies are stillborn, you know, they're dead. And everyone in between those age ranges dies. So we do die for our sins because of sin, but that doesn't pay the penalty for sins unto righteousness because we only die once. Well, Yeshua, who is eternally righteous, and you know, at the risk of losing some of you now, he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Dirt dauber. He hit my head and dropped a little inchworm that he or she got to store with her eggs. I hope the little inchworm makes it when I get done with this video. If it's still there, I'm going to collect it up and try to carry it somewhere where it has a greater chance of survival. But anyway, back to the point. Emmanuel, God with us. So, Yahweh, or God, is eternal. He has always existed. Because another concept, eternity is not lots and lots of time. Eternity is existence outside of time. As in, there's no such thing as time in eternity. And that's a concept that most people cannot wrap their heads around. So, anyway, um, he that is eternal and eternally righteous died and, you know, became a man and died in our place to take the penalty for our sins. Well, he only died once. Right. But he is eternally righteous. Period. We are not eternally righteous until we are made eternally righteous. But just because... Messiah came and paid the penalty for our sins, does that give us the right and or authority to go on living in sin with impunity? Absolutely not. You know, I'm sure that a lot of you, if not all of you, have heard this analogy before. You know, you're out here on the road and you're running late, speed limit's 55, you hit on up about 65 or 70 miles an hour. State trooper gets up behind you and pulls you over. Comes up to the window and asks you, where are you going in such a hurry? Well, officer, I'm late for work and, and you know, since you pulled me over, I'm going to be even later. And I was speeding, so I'm guilty of transgressing the law of the speed limit. But I ask for your mercy in this matter and, you know, could you just let me slide this time? So, what does the officer do? He says, alright, well I tell you what, I patrol this road all the time and now I know what time you're coming through here in the morning so I'm going to keep an eye out for you. Don't let me catch your speed again. I'm going to let you off this time with a warning. Alright, so you go on and you show up late for work, no problem. 
boss calls you in the office, why are you late? Well, you know, I had a little trouble before I left the house and, and I got it straightened out and, you know, then I was on the way here and I was going to be right on time by the skin of my teeth, but because I was speeding, I got pulled over and, you know, the, the state trooper was nice enough to let me go with a warning. All right, so this is two things that you've done wrong today. You were speeding, and you got caught, and you were late for work, and you got caught. Well, the boss man says, well, from now on, call if you think you're going to be late. Even if you're not going to be late, if there's a possibility you're going to be late, call me and let me know what's going on. I'm an understanding boss, and we can work these things out. Now, company policy is that I'm supposed to write you up because you have been late in the past, but I'm going to let it slide this one more time. Don't be late again without calling me. All right, so that's grace you found twice. First thing in the morning. You should be on top of the world at this point. You should be high on life because you've been blessed twice already this morning okay so tomorrow morning you get up is it okay for you to speed I mean you you were forgiven for speeding the first time and you were told don't speed again because speeding is against the law which you already knew that so you wake up run a little bit behind you hop in the car you get pulled over is the cop gonna let you go the second time no because you've been warned you've been told it's against the law and because you got pulled over now you're certainly gonna be late for work you get to work and the boss writes you up so you understand how that works here on earth in, in secular society, you know, in man's laws and rules and regulations and, and, and whatnot, why is it so hard to understand that it's the same way with Yahweh and Yeshua? You know, Yeshua is the forgiving police officer that lets you go. But, you know, the funny thing is, is he didn't let us go once or twice or three times. There is a point that he stops letting you go. But just because you were let go once or twice or three times or a thousand times or seven times seventy times for committing such and such a sin, does that mean that it was okay to do those things that our Father has told us not to do? absolutely not and it never will be okay so anyway in discussing things with these people earlier today they, they keep going well you need to read Hebrews chapter 7 or you need to read the book of Galatians and you know they don't understand which laws Paul was talking about because there's you know two three seven different types of law that Paul was talking about. You know, you had um, the Torah, which is the first law or the first set of instructions for living that the human race was given or the human species was given, period. Because he gave them to Adam. I don't know if he gave them to Adam at creation or if he gave them to Adam after the fall but either way Adam had them and I can prove that scripturally or I should say scripture proves that all right so another law that Paul would have been talking about would have been the the oral tradition you know, the, the traditions of the elders that Yeshua got on the Pharisees about. Another law that Paul would have been talking about would have been the Talmud. 
All right, so these are three laws that I know Paul was talking about. And I have been told that there's actually a total of seven laws that Paul was talking about. I don't know what all seven of them, seven of them are. I can only speculate that they would be um, the, the Israelis' civil ordinances and laws and whatnot that were passed down by the kings and the ruling bodies and whatnot that are outside of Torah the oral tradition in Talmud. And then there was, when the Romans were in charge, there was the, the Roman law that they had to abide by. So there's five laws right there that Paul would have been talking about. So that only leaves two more, and I just, I'm not sure what they are. So first, you need to know what law Paul is talking about when he says, don't put yourself under the law. And you can't understand those things without doing some civil research in Israel or Israel's historical society and, and structure and whatnot. Alright. So another thing that you have to consider is all through Scripture, the Old Testament as it's commonly referred to, um, a lot of people call it, I think, the Pentateuch, which is means the five books, I think, is what it means. And then there's there's a lot of different references, but, but for purposes of, this, purposes of this video, I'm just going to say the Old Testament. All right, so all through the Old Testament, that would be Torah and the prophets. Torah, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then the prophets would be everything between um, whatever comes after Deuteronomy and all the way up to Malachi, I think it is, is the last book. You know, between Genesis, Action, Visit, Numbers, between Deuteronomy and Matthew are the prophets, okay? Well, then we have what most people refer to as the New Testament. And. The truth is, is it should be referred to as the renewed covenant because it's the same covenant. Yeshua came to confirm it, to preach it, to teach it, to live it, to show us how to do it and to show us that it can be done and to explain to us a lot of the reasons for a lot of it and, you know, to cast off and shed all the false teachings by the Pharisees and, and Sadducees. But anyway, all through the Torah, you know, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of, of Yahweh or the word of God is forever. Um, I'm not a man that I should change my mind you know, so there's two witnesses right there. Um, the same today, yesterday, and forever, which I'm not sure if that's Old or New Testament. Um, then there's the Deuteronomy that says, Today I set before you uh, blessing and life and, and curses and death. You know, choose life. All right, well, there's two options there. Life and death, blessings and curses, obedience and disobedience. There is no third option. Well, if you don't want to be cursed, but you don't want to obey either, take this third road over here. No, there, there's no such road, you know. And in the Renewed Covenant, the New Testament, Yeshua says what? Broad is the way that leads to death. You know, straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. In other words, it's a narrow path that leads to everlasting life. So, is disobeying Yahweh's instructions given in the Torah and the prophets a narrow path? No, absolutely not. That's what most people do. They disobey those instructions. But anyway, got an end time prophecy for you. And 
I'll tell you what book he come out of when I get finished with these first two verses I'm about to read and a small commentary for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many okay there's two verses right there has the Messiah or the Lord or God Jesus however you want to refer to him has he come back yet and dealt out justice you know has he come back with a sword and slain many no that has not happened yet that is still yet to come right I mean I think all of us know that there has not been a worldwide judgment with fire. There was one with water, and we've been promised that that will not happen again, and that's why we have the rainbow. You know, the rainbow is the, a sign of his promise that he'll not destroy the earth by water again. So the next time he comes to, to dole out judgment, it's going to be with fire. You know, so the very next verse after that says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Okay, has that happened yet? And right here it specifically says eating swine's flesh. <clears throat> okay you sanctify yourselves and purify yourselves in the garden behind one tree you sit up there in the church building and you quote one verse or, or one passage or one chapter or you know because the, the, the chapter breaks and verses weren't in it until more recent times but you know, the point is, is, you know, call it one sentence or, or even one prophet for that matter. You know, you hide behind the Apostle Paul to say that you're sanctified and purified and you can eat what you want and do what you want because the law has been done away with. But this scripture right here says that when the Messiah comes back, all the people that are doing that, that are hiding behind these scriptures and twisting them to mean something that they don't, to say that obedience is, is done away with, you're going to be destroyed. So like it says in Deuteronomy, choose life. Choose good. Choose the way of life. Choose truth. Because what did Yeshua say? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Right? So what does that mean? That means first, He has to wash you clean. And then, you have to stay clean. Yes, we're going to trip up sometimes. Don't do it in willful ignorance or on purpose. Yahweh loves you. And believe it or not, I do. I don't always sound like it. But there again, doesn't Scripture say that Yahweh chastens the ones that He loves? So shouldn't we behave in like manner, you know? How loving is it for someone to stand there and pat you on the head? Oh, it's okay. You know, you're washed clean by, by the blood of Jesus. Just, you know, go ahead on out and play. No. You admonish them. You know, it's a sin to sleep with somebody if you're not married to them. It's a sin to sleep with somebody that, and you're married to another somebody. You know, it's a sin for you to look on that 
person over there that you find attractive and, and have these vain imaginings about sleeping with them. So you see, even your intent is judgeable. Anyway, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved. And um, I hope to see you all in the kingdom. Yahweh bless.